Hi everyone, welcome to another Nature Walks video. Um, Join me today in the churchyard and uh, as you're probably starting to learn, uh, I never miss up the opportunity to have a look at a dead thing, which is what I have for you today. Um, so this is what I've just found. So I'm just in the churchyard uh, and I was just walking up the path as I usually do. This is on my home patch and little circuit and uh, just on the ground here, I've come across this fella. Now the reason why I say it's really good to uh, never miss out on the opportunity to look at dead things is because essentially the great thing about dead things is that you don't disturb the animal which is often a problem if you're trying to get close to something and it's a unique opportunity to get really close so lots of the time when we see uh, creatures they fly off they're hard to get to and we're frustrated by not being able to see the features but when they're dead like this it's a great chance to get really close so I never miss the opportunity um, so this one is quite clearly a mammal, a small mammal, one of the small rodents in fact, so what we classify these as sort of the small mammal group, sort of medium mammals we would sort of talk about would be um, sort of the water voles, uh, hedgehogs, all those sort of things and the larger ones being the foxes and badgers. So this one's very small as you can see and sort of if I put my thumb next to it you can see its average size. So the question is, is which type of small mammal is it and how do you tell them apart? Because there's three in the group, there's the mouse, there's the vole, and there is the shrew and then there's obviously a couple of species in each of those which you can mix them up with. So the easiest way to tell is to basically look at the prominence of certain features. So how big are the eyes, how big and prominent are the ears and how long is the tail. So in this example here we can see it's got big eyes, very very big eyes, nice and distinct, very very big ears, nice and wide, well above the head and if we go to the back we can see it's got a very long prominent tail um, and you might notice this tail looks a bit weird it's actually been stripped and um, probably in whatever fight it was in that was unfortunately caused its death um, which i'm not 100 sure but i'm going to guess cat usually they are the biggest killer of these things so big eyes big ears long tail so all those big features lead to one group that's a mouse so the mice tend to have these big features Voles have small features, so they have small eyes, their ears are tucked in right up against their head and their tails are generally quite short, so it's actually quite easy to split the two. The trick then is knowing which of the species it is, so we're only going to focus on the mouse today because I've got an example. So there's two species that you can come across really, uh, there's what we call the wood mouse uh, and what we call either um, the house mouse really is, is what its general other name is, so house mouse versus wood mouse. Um, so which one is this? Well, the easiest way to tell um, which it is, is to essentially look at two main features. So look at the fur on top. Now the light is a little better for me than it is for you on the camera, but generally uh, in a wood mouse, their fur is quite mottled. You get different colors of brown, whereas on a house mouse, it's all uniformly one color and generally quite dark. And this one you can see is quite mottled in color. There's bits of lighter tanned color versus a darker brown here and similarly so lighter tan colour here. So that's one good way, but the second way is to essentially flip it over, oh, and if you get a bright belly, bright white belly, that's a good sign that this is a wood mouse. So if this was a house mouse, this would all be much more uniform in colour. You wouldn't get such a, a strong difference between the top and the underside. Uh, and this one here is a female actually. I don't know if you can just see if I move a bit of the fur, but you can just see that there is a few nipples just coming through. So I hope she wasn't pregnant. That would be very sad. Um, anyway, so yes. So there you go. So I hope that's helpful. You can sort of now tell the difference between a mouse and a vole. Um, if I come across a dead vole, I'll do another video and hopefully then we can talk about the different features between the different vole species because they're slightly more subtle. But when it comes to mice, hopefully it's a bit easier. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, have a good day. Bye.